Hello everyone, my name is Genevieve Brown and I work at Northumbria University. I work as a lecturer there, so I teach and do research. I teach statistics and I do research on how people use social media to stay in touch. Today I'd like to talk to you about emoticons. Emoticons are one way we can show emotions when we are communicating on the internet or on our telephones, like with texting. Today for our activity, I'd like you to try to make your very own emoji. Um, so we'll be making an emoticon of an emotion based on your face. So you'll need some paper, scissors, something to draw with, a pen or crayon or pencil, and any craft supplies that you might have around the house. The first step is to cut out a circle or the shape of your face from the paper. So I have an example here. I've drawn a circle on this paper and then I have cut it out, ready to draw my emoji. Step two, pick an emotion that you'd like to draw. It could be happy, sad, afraid, surprised, disgusted, or angry. Step three, Look in the mirror or take a selfie while you're making the emotion that you would like to draw. So how does your face look when you're feeling happy? How does your face look when you're feeling sad? How does your face look when you're feeling angry? Once you have a photo of yourself or you're looking at yourself in the mirror, the next step, step four, is to try and draw the features of your face and the shapes that they make while you're making while you're feeling that emotion. Uh, think about the different parts of your face and what shapes they're making. So try to draw your eyebrows, your eyes, your nose, and your mouth and the shapes that they're making while you're feeling a certain emotion. Step five. Once you've drawn your face, now you get to decorate your emoticon. So be creative. You can try and make it look like you in different ways. So I have some examples here of some different versions I've done. So here's my scared face. Uh, you can see I've colored my eyes blue because my eyes are blue and here's my lips are red and my hair is yellow. So I've used pipe cleaners for the hair. You can also use things that you just happen to have around the house. So here, for example, I had some leftover tin foil from Easter eggs, and so I've used that as my hair on my angry face. You can also just decorate it in a fun way. So I had some crafting supplies around the house, so I had some purple feathers for the hair and some goggly eyes for my happy face. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about my research on emoticons. Psychologists have been interested in studying emotions for a very long time. One of the first researchers to study this was Paul Ekman, and back in the 1970s, he created a list of six basic emotions. Ekman's six basic emotions are happiness, sadness, anger, surprise, disgust, and fear. Happiness is the emotion you might feel when you're talking to your friends or watching a funny television show. Sadness is what you might feel when you are missing your friends. Uh, anger is what you might feel when someone interrupts you or maybe somebody turns off the TV while you're watching it. You might feel fear if you, feel, if you hear a strange noise in the middle of the night. Surprise, sometimes we feel this when we get a gift we're not expecting. And disgust tends to be linked to um, things we don't like, like foods that taste bad, um, or we might be disgusted because we don't get to do something that we wanted to. So Ekman found that people around the world make similar faces when they're feeling these six emotions and that people everywhere could recognize these. So it's very interesting that around the world everybody is experiencing similar emotions and showing them in similar ways with their face. But when we text or post messages online, we can't always see uh, other people's faces that we're talking to. 
so we need to find some other ways to express emotions, and this is how emoticons came about. I personally have experienced this ambiguity surrounding emojis. When I was younger, I had a friend who always used to send me emails, and she would sign with a less than symbol followed by a three. And I always wondered, why does she sign her emails with a but? So I asked her and she explained that it was a heart but turned on its side. So uh, this demonstrates the fact that when we are using symbols that are maybe incomplete or have less details than we're used to seeing, then sometimes it's hard to understand, understand them. And the same is true of emoticons where we just have um, basic details of the face and we don't have as many details as we have on real people's faces when we're trying to understand their emotions. In my own research, I'm interested in exploring this ambiguousness about emoticons more. So I'll be looking at which types of emoticons people use in different cultures to express happiness and sadness. And I'll look to see if they're the same or different and if we can replicate Ep Ekman's results that people tend to use the same expressions to express basic emotions in different cultures. Thank you for your time today and I hope you've enjoyed this video.